Welcome to Boxcars Garage. This is episode number one. The project is going to be the replacement of a recirculating pump and tank on a medium-duty bandsaw for less than $30. I picked up this saw the other day. It was in great shape. It just needed a little bit of cleanup. It had a uh, bent tray in the back, but it was missing its pump and tank. I came up with a way to replace those items rather cheaply, $30.00. So this video could be relevant to somebody that had a pump swap out situation with their bandsaw or for the guy that doesn't have coolant as an option for their bandsaw, you could uh, use my rig plus add your plumbing and a valve at the end um, and achieve the whole shooting match for probably less than, let's say, 40 or $50. So stay tuned and I'll show you how I did it. So kicking things off, um, I had to remove the tray. You can see I already did the repair there. I simply added a, a piece of tubular material I had laying around the shop and drove some uh, metal cutting screws in the edge, which um, gave it some stiffness that would keep it from getting bent up again. Because I knew I wanted to knock down a couple of those tabs. Those tabs had been there probably to hold the other tank and my tank wasn't the same size and I actually needed to slide my tank off to the other edge of the tray. So one of those tabs, at least one, had to go. So I got the tray removed to do that. So moving over the table, I did a little bit of body work. Um, I had to knock down that tab, and then I decided to go ahead and weld up the uh, gap that was around that tab. Uh, it's just pressed in. Um, I welded that gap up just to add some more rigidity to that tray. I could have knocked down both tabs thinking about it, knocked them both down and hammered them flat and welded them both up, but I really was only concerned about the one. So I took the easy way out and just knocked down the one and got it welded up. With the plate being really light gauge, I uh, opted for a series of tacks for my weld. I also had a relatively large gap there I had to fill, so I uh, used a 1 16th inch uh, stainless steel TIG filler rod to uh, bridge that gap. And then I just tacked it on both sides of that. When I ground it down, it ground down flush and it, was, uh, it did a fine job for what I was looking for. So I was lucky enough to find a tank that I thought fit my application. It actually held a gallon of fluid, which I thought was good for my cutting fluid capacity. That back part there, that round item, that actually holds a heater coil that is in the bottom of that tank, and that heater coil needed to be removed to make space for the pump. So the pump that I used was a small uh, Creekstone pump. came from Harbor Freight. It was like a 4 point five gallon per minute pump about twenty dollars the uh, pex fitting that i've showed up there it's what i actually ended up making the connection with from the pump to the uh, supply tube The heater coil ended up being a challenge to remove. The only access you had to it was from that uh, round port, but it only allowed you to pull out the heater coil about three quarters of an inch, but that enabled me to cut the individual coils one by one, pulling them out, and then I would rotate the entire unit about 90 degrees, and then I would cut the next one. And it did that a series of times, and eventually I got it all out. I 
I used a die grinder to cut the excess hole off the top of the container. You may notice uh, there is no guards on that die grinder and uh, my other hand is in a precarious position in relation to the blade so I wouldn't advise cutting like this unless you've done it for many years and uh, you're used to getting cut once in a while. It's not the safest way to do things and um, I'm not uh, showing you how to do things. I'm showing you how I did something. So always be aware of your safety manuals. My apologies for not getting the fab on this one. My battery had died, but I now have a spare. I had some uh, stainless steel laying around the shop, so I decided to use it for the access top. Um, simple top. I used my metal brake for the edge and gave it a uh, scuffed up finish on the outside so I thought it turned out pretty nice. So while gluing up the epoxy piece um, I uh, ended up getting some epoxy on my new project mat and uh, found out that epoxy really does a number on uh, those sort of things so I thought I would uh, clean it off with some of that uh, goof off and uh, found that it uh, may take off the epoxy but it also takes off all the paint on the project mat so my project mat is not as nice and shiny as it was before so I could say it's uh, it's been broke in now. During these final connections I was still using the pump supplied plastic transition piece from the pump to the supply hose but as it would turn out the uh, PEX fitting turned out to be a far better fastener and actually set my connection point much lower actually got my connection point in the tank versus on the top side of the tank so it all worked out for the best to keep the coolant tank secured I used some pieces of one inch aluminum angle which I pre-drilled and secured with self-tapping metal screws For the oil drain tube filter, I use an antique kitchen strainer. I cut the mesh from the bottom and fastened it to the bottom of the drain tube with a zip tie and then cut away all the excess. I'm not sure if that's going to be the right gauge of mesh to use. Only time will tell. I could go a couple sizes larger, but we'll see how this one works out. So I initially got the idea to use this pump from a fellow YouTuber his channel name is Pat at PSA Customs Creation and uh, he had used this Harbor Freight pump for his bandsaw and uh, I asked him a question he actually said that he got two years use out of it so I'm hoping to extend the life of my pump by using this mesh as a uh, pre-filter for uh, to keep the materials out of my pump and hopefully that'll extend the longevity of the pump For the electrical connections, I used heat shrink tubing and splice cap connectors, and then I wrapped it all with electrical tape.
on the first go, I ended up having to do an emergency shutdown. I walked around the back of the uh, bandsaw and saw that there was fluid everywhere. Evidently, my um, initial epoxy joint with those plastic fittings, they had failed. I don't know if it was a pressure problem or if the epoxy was a bad match to the plastics that were involved, but uh, that created a big mess. Okay, this is a moment of truth. Did I fix it? Or did I not? Here we go.